Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky from Blue Cat Studio. This is not my normal video, but um, I am going through a little little something right now. Both my parents are in the hospital, and sometimes we just need art to de-stress. So I figured I would catch a little video and explain sort of one of the ways that I do it. So this is a piece of tracer tracing paper, and I used a Sharpie, permanent marker, to journal out a couple of thoughts for myself. You know, one of, and these ones, I know both my parents are gonna be fine, and they're hospitalized for totally different reasons. Um, but this is for me how I deal with my stress. So my journaling here is about protecting myself and self-care and self-love and understanding that through stress, you know, sometimes you cannot continue to operate at the same level that you were when you weren't under stress. So, you know, you know, what I have here is I am love. God, angels, universe, guide and protect me. Help me carry this home, as in carry the all the things in this house um, and all the souls within it to safety and health. And so I like to embed these in my paintings, and it makes the painting a lot more meaningful and very personal. I actually like to use this technique when doing painted meditations or if I'm working with a yoga studio or other spiritually God-centered focused individuals who want to do a little something extra. And it doesn't have to be much, right? But I do love embedding something. So I'm ripping the edges because it goes down easier. Now you could use Mod Podge, but I find you can also just embed this in paint. Now I have a messy canvas. It was left over from a splatter party. The kids were more interested in splattering one another than they were the canvases. So I got a bunch left over and I can either throw it away or do something fun with it. So I'm going to pick some clashy-ish colors. I'm going to stay in the red, red, orange, yellow. I don't know, this zone. So I got some magenta, some red. Oh, what else can we do? I want to, here we have maroon. And I think a dark teal and some plum purple would be fun. They're kind of analogous on the color spectrum, I think. There, it's like a plum purple. Oh, I have some fluorescent purple. That'll be fun, too. We'll put a little bit of that there. Okay, we're good. Now, you can either do this with a large brush or a chip brush. All my chip brushes seem to have gone walk about. Oh, there's one. Okay. I'm just going for basic coverage here. I just want it to be kind of pretty and vibrant and I don't even know how much of this background painting will even you know survive and how much I'll paint over but in some ways just laying down paint even if it's a little bit sloppy it's just so therapeutic it feels so good a little bit of red in here to kind of clishy clashy it it's purple and again sometimes just being Letting, letting the perfectionist go, just letting that paint fly. It's a good thing. Okay. So then we can take this guy. And just put him here. And we'll just see what we can do about kind of embedding it into the paint. And I like tracing paper because it tends to allow the paint colors to show through. It's gonna get a little bit rumply, I don't mind. And we use the permanent marker because it won't bleed. I am love, I like that one right there. Again, you can embed these however you like it. I don't mind the rumples, I feel like it adds a fun texture. You know, I'm always talking about texture. It's getting a bit shaky. Oh my goodness, sorry, we're having a little focus. Come on, there we go. So this one almost needs a little bit more paint, I think, to kind of tack it down. So here, we'll grab some fluorescent purple since that's the closest thing to hand. And you'll know whether, you're, whether your stuff is adhering or not. It becomes pretty obvious. Like this one, it was just too thin a layer and it's not sticking. Okay. So that's kind of funky. Again, I've got some cool ripples and I, I don't mind it. I just go with it and paint over it and don't stress. So go ahead, upload your paper. You 
Now, if I was like super worried about, you know, my parents surviving and all that, their hospitalizations right now, I would probably be writing very different kind of prayers on these. But for this one, I'm, I'm feeling very confident and good about both of them. So this one's now more about myself. And again, this is selfish with, as some spiritual folks I know call it, a capital S, where you're really focusing on taking care of yourself so that you can take care of everyone else. Um, and that's something that, as I age, I find has become more and more important. So I've just rinsed that brush. Now I have some white colored pencils. This is a Karan Dash. It's basically a watercolor pencil, which allows me to kind of sketch. Do I want to go long ways? No, let's do a tall flower. Let's do tall flowers. And I have just kind of, there's a horizon line for giggles. Do a vase of some sort. I don't even know. Here, let's make it a wonky vase. Yeah, we'll do a wonky vase. Why not? Doesn't even matter. Then I know I'm going to want to have kind of a flower here. We'll kind of make the petals. I think we actually here, we're going to fold them this way. All right, so if this is my center, I'm kind of having a little overlap here. Maybe I'll do another one, kind of right over it this way. That may be a little daisy of some sort. And watercolor pencils are fun because they'll sort of draw over the paint, but they'll also kind of blend in. I mean, it's getting a little crazy looking. I keep a light blue also, just in case my white runs out. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll do something right here that sort of plops out in a direction. So I'm thinking of like creating like a cup or a bell shape. And then maybe we'll do, we need something here other than just leaves. So here we'll have a leaf coming down, a leaf coming out. What do we put here? I guess I could just put like a basic rose kind of thing that's mostly facing us. And then we need something here, maybe, maybe another one of these bell-shaped flowers. And again, you see, I'm getting just really, really sketchy. We'll do a few shoots coming off. You know, we'll add berries and things going where they need to go. Uh -oh. Okay, things going where they need to go. We'll give it a quick bake with our heat, heat gun. And this is fun because I can already, I can see some of the words sticking out, but if I don't end up seeing the words sticking out in the end, I'm not really worried, you know? Like, it's, it's going to be what it's going to be. Oh, I just got this idea, though. Gold leaf would be fun. Here, I've got some messed up leftover gold leaf. So I guess I need a palette, huh? I'm going to do a little finger painting because it's cathartic. And sometimes when... You can feel your stress levels up a bit, you know, getting very involved and sort of elemental is kind of a nice thing. All right, a little bit of wet here. Hopefully I can remember where I put that. Now I'm going to take some gold leaf, and I, it's usually between two sheets. I'm just going to kind of place it down and leave, leave some behind. Place it down and, whoops, leave some behind, and it'll stick to the paint wherever it's wet. This is not like a super scientific way of doing things. It's messy. It's fun. I really love it. I really love gold leaf. I think back when I had a Timu account, I was literally just, I think I bought like 10,000 sheets of this. I used most of it on my painted prom dress, but I still have like at least 100 sheets left, which is great because it's fun to just break out. Now, is there really any rhyme or reason to, oh, there's a sticky spot here. Rhyme or reason? No, I just want some gold. And again, this feels very, it's a very tactile experience, you know. Sort of you are really getting into it with your materials, and I like that. And then I can just see if there's any other wet parts that'll sort of pull the stuff off my fingers. And it kind of has an organic feel, you know. Good enough. Yay! We finger painted. And I'm not going to worry about it. From here, I'm just going to move on. So we'll grab some black paint. Oop! Well, I got black everywhere. It's okay. And let's see what kind of brush do we want. You know, I was using one of these. This guy seems big. I want a smaller version of that. I'm kind of loving the um, whatever that brush is called. 
filbert oh here we go slightly smaller so I'm gonna work big which means I'm gonna be a little bit inaccurate so we got a, a flower center there let's see this guy might have a flower center we'll just kind of jot something in I think I put one here so we got a flower center here so I'm kind of keeping these flower centers oval oh what did I do here oh I see it now <laughs> all right so this is this guy so I know there's going to be petal overlappage going on. And we'll give this guy a little black center too, just in case. And sometimes that just sort of helps me kind of focus like, well, where's my stuff? Where is it? What do we got going on here? All right, from there, I'm going to offload this excess black paint. Am I? Oh, here, let's, let's sketch this guy in a little. Just a little. Yeah, there we go. Because this is such a mess, I'm just going to kind of offload my brush. And it looks like since I made that choice, this will not be a glass base, but a solid base of some sort. So now I'm gonna rinse. You can really see the texture in there. And then I think the next step is we wanna get some green in. It's easier to sort of paint flowers over the leaves. So getting those leaves in early is good. And I'm sure I could grab like the perfect color, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make my own green. So a little bit of yellow and I use a daffodil yellow, the festive green. Oops, I grabbed, I meant to grab the brown and I grabbed the other yellow. That's true yellow or true, what is that? Primary yellow and some brown. So I'm gonna take this guy here. I like to always sort of drag the paint into a zone. Oh, that's a lovely color. So that's the daffodil yellow from folk art and the festive green from deco art. And I think that's a great start. It's super vibrant. It's gonna really pop against this background. And I can always tone it down and bring it into the normal realm if I want to, if being the operative word. And I'm just gonna kinda of add some green blops out and about. Maybe something kinda of here. Now that my gold leaf is in, I'm not even worrying about it. It's gonna be like, well, if I get some of it, great. If I don't, that's okay too. I'm keeping it very loose. Is this gonna be a masterpiece? I don't know. Do I care? Not really. This is a de-stressor piece is what it is for me. So again, anywhere you kind of have, you know, spaces in between flowers, a few extra kind of dots and whatnot, maybe a few somethings down here. What a mess. A glorious, glorious mess fill in a little bit more. So I was all about the brown, but this color is just so happy, especially against all that um, magenta. So I, I'll bring in the brown later if I need it. Decisions, decisions. We always make the decisions on the fly. So offloading that brush on my piece of paper, rinsing. And now I'm supposed to work on the back flowers first and then move my way forward, which means this is gonna be one of the last flowers, as is this guy. I tell you, it was like I saw somebody or other had a photo of flowers on their page, and they had this one like light pink flower. I don't know if it was a magnolia. I can't even remember what it was, but that flower is stuck in my brain, and like I keep integrating that one flower in different aspects into <laughs> my paintings. Oh, I'm trying. I can't even remember who it was that posted it, and it doesn't really look like the flower they posted, but it certainly sparked a lot of uh, inspiration. So I'm gonna throw down some white. And now I'm happy I have my true yellow. Get that brush rinsed and dried. And I'm feeling like this daisy guy here is kind of a background color. Oh, this green is still super wet. So is the black. It's not a daisy, it's gonna be a black-eyed Susan. All right, so some yellow i have some wet black there i have to just be careful and a little bit of white the white is going to just give it that little um help it stay uh not translucent solid opaque there's my word it's like going through the mental dictionary rolodex of words what is it so i don't know if you can see but i'm kind of going wide and bigger on the top here and then I'm kind of narrowing as I come in and I'm thinking we're going to just kind of start to create little shorties right here so that it looks like that guy's pointing upwards. 
perspective on flowers it takes some time and I like to say that you you have to kind of develop the artist's eye I grab a little bit of white and just kind of work it into those keeping it kind of loose you know but like you start to look at things and instead of just seeing you know the symmetrical flower with a circle in the middle which is a great first start for seeing flowers you begin to see their forms and how oh wow it's light on this upper portion and then it's darker deep in the middle of that and then it gets lighter as those petals go out um, it's really fun when that when that happens so let's go ahead and wipe the brush off since we're in the warms and I think we're going to continue in the warms I don't really feel the need to rinse my brush but I do need some orange, so let's grab some Harvest Orange. It's an apple barrel color. I really like that one. And where's my red? Let's get some red. And because this is more therapeutic for me, I'm going to be honest, I am completely making this up as I go. You know, I didn't have a sense of what this flower arrangement would look like until I sketched it live with you. And I want some quinacridone magenta. This quinacridone is a beautiful mixer. Um, in fact, check this out. We'll take some quinacridone right here. I'm going to grab some of that daffodil yellow. Oops, got to get the green off. Okay. And mix them in. And that is... Well, we'll get a little bit more of the quinacridone. And that should give me just a warm, kind of lovely red color. It's very weird how that works. But I'm going to take that guy and I'm going to kind of do some stuff in here. Now I'm not liking how that's going down, but it's a great base coat, so we're going to go with it. I'm just going to dip into the red and sort of start to fill in this guy right here. And we begin with just a really loose, really loose blobbing. Sometimes just having those good base colors is going to be really important. Now that this guy I want the reds on, so kind of just long pieces. And you think about as you're creating this flower, if everything kind of comes to an apex point right here, then you want to make sure that the lines of each of your petals sort of aims at that apex. I've got a mysterious something in this zone, so I may even just kind of plop a few bits of red in. Why not? Come in here with some orange. Now this orange is feeling very translucent to me today, but again, I'm working on a dark background so I don't have the benefit of, of, the, um, of the white to help pop those colors. Those colors working out beautifully though. And I think I'm gonna come in, well, that's not so pretty, but who cares? Add a little orange there, a little yellow. I don't fully have a plan for this, I'm gonna be honest. But again, thanks for joining my therapy session. This is how I bring my stress levels down. And now I'm gonna grab some white. So I've just been kind of messing with yellow and orange inside the vase. I like that little bit of black in there. It, it feels like it kind of added a bit of depth for me, even though I'm covering most of, it up, most of it up. And then I'm adding just touches of white kind of on this side. So I guess this is where we're deciding to have our, our highlights. The sun, the light is coming, light source is coming from here. Cool beans. Wiping off my brush, just getting rid of the excess. 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 Yeah. I want to dry these flowers before I go further. And so I guess I'll throw it out there. If you guys feel that I really need to have a tracer for this, um, you let me know in the comments and um, I'll develop one. But I'm also hoping that you kind of take a minute and try, try the whole sketching. And you know, the more flowers you do, the better you get at them. On my first time doing flowers, I felt pretty awkward, I'll be honest. I want some more like yellowy orange on this guy. He's not fully dry, but I'm gonna take a little bit of this orange and I'm literally just gonna mix it into my yellow here. But small amounts of orange at a time because I want it to be kind of tangerine-y and kind of come in and add a little extra to this guy and maybe a bit at the tips. I don't even know. There we 
go. So the little bit of that middle, I mostly covered over it, but it is darker in the center and it kind of shows. I guess I can kind of add in a little bit of the red. But I like to think of it as, you know, the more you sort of learn the laws of, of nature and how light plays on shapes and how you look at things from different angles, the easier it gets to actually paint and create flowers and just be kind of loose and do. I mean, this is not a de this is not a skill that develops overnight. It does kind of take some time, and I'm getting way too fluffy in there, but it's looking cute, so we're gonna go with it. Take a breath, Wendy. All right, I got some magenta here. I'm gonna pull it over here. I'm gonna grab some white and mix it in, which will give me a lovely but very cool color. I'm gonna kind of take that and kind of play it in at the the base of each of these guys, and you can see that I clearly. Didn't rinse my brush because touches of yellow are popping in. I feel okay about that. And the other beauty about having all this dark background is, hey, if we end up leaving blank spots because this color is here, okay, focus, it still looks cool. And if you're feeling, you know, like, I don't want people to see my journal entries, can you see mine? No, not really. So it's a great way to kind of hide them, but you know they're there. It becomes your, kind of your secret painting. I'm gonna grab some purple. Because as usual, I want some purple spikes. So I'm going to take that purple and just mix it in with that magenta white combo and maybe throw a few, a few blops here and there. Oh, wait a minute. My screen went black. I hope, yep, okay, you can still see me. I think maybe a little purple something could go right here. I don't even know what. It's a little purple something because I've got some gaps. All right, so we've got a lot of purple somethings, and that'll be a nice counterbalance. It doesn't show up terribly well, so I'll add a little white to add a little emphasis, because we're kind of going tone on tone here with this light purple and this background. So by adding just a few, a little bit of white combo in there, and I don't know, that, it's wonky, but it works. And the, the, the lightened version kind of helps pop it a little bit. Oh, there's one I missed. See, it is totally tone on tone. Woo! How are we doing, team? All right. I th so I had a really high horizon line. I guess I could maintain that. I'm gonna, what do I want to do? Ooh, I want to... I'm feeling periwinkle color right now. I'm going to grab some cobalt blue. Pop that there. I need more quick. Well, here, I'm going to grab this bright magenta because it's easier to get at. Oh, goodness. I like I'm out of mixing spaces. All right, we're going to just mix it right here. Blue and pink. No, it needs teal. That is what's missing from that is teal. A little mermaid tail. Mermaid tail does amazing things to colors. There we are. Then I need some white. Put a little blob there next to it. Work it in. One more teal. Yep, that's a funky color. I'm good with that. So I kind of like that along here as kind of a shadow. A little bit of just plain teal to kind of work in. But by adding some of those sort of purpley tones and bluing it up a bit, it keeps it sort of soft and kind of in the realm of, of nature. All right. Right, because my light is coming from here. So we've dragged more shadow out behind it in this direction. Oh, there's more teal. Oh, teal and pink. Let's see what happens. Oh, I like that. Get it kind of like a little smush of both. I really like that. I think my chip brush left a lot behind. Okay. Slightly muddy. No problem. Let's go ahead and offload. Wipe off that brush. Get all the excess paint off. So, as I'm seeing a lot of different, I'm seeing warms and colds coming off of my brush. And that tells me that I'm going to have dirt if I keep going. So, I got to rinse it. By the way, thanks for hanging with me as I 
<laughs> Secretly explore my feelings. All right. So I've got white. This guy, I'm leaning towards a super pale pink, but I'm pro I'm also kind of feeling like a yellow. So let's start off with just a touch of whatever magenta, bright magenta in the white, and we'll just kind of build out the flower petals. And so again, I'm kind of building it out, right? And we'll get into our differentiation as we go. So this one is going to kind of be more like so, and more like so. And we have some petals that just sort of come out like this. And again, I'm sort of just blobbing this all in here, right? I mean, it's a little bit lacking rhyme and reason. I mean, there's rhyme and reason, but it feels a bit blobbed and that's okay. So for this guy, I know we're gonna kind of blob something, oh, too much, something here, here, maybe something coming out this way. This one's only sort of working out. We'll find a way to pull it off though, I promise. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't not work, it's just not quite what I had in mind. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of pink on this guy kind of create almost like a ruffle feeling. Oh, I picked up a little bit of turquoise. I'm good with that. I mean, touches of pink, and I don't like that. Come back with our red. Sure. A little bit more dots in here, a little something. Again, I'm just kind of adding a little bit of filler here and there. I don't want to go overboard, but it's still kind of fun. Maybe we've dropped a petal or two. Now I need more white, but I need a place where there's no, no smearage going on. So I think this spot here is old dry paint that I can go over. I'm gonna wipe my brush real quick. But I'm in the cool tones on this. So I think that's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna come over this and kind of add like a little ruffle in here. So if we're thinking of kind of creating the petal edges. Again, I'm working with a big brush. Oh. <sighs> Chip brush, bristle. Get it. So I guess, you know, when you're feeling, you know, whether it's a sense of helplessness or like, wow, you know, all I can do is be at the hospital with my parents, being able to pause just for a short amount of time and paint and play and do something kind of for myself that stokes my creativity. There's really something, again, cathartic and releasing and relaxing about it where I, I can go in and be like, yep, I painted today, I feel really good. I got some color out on canvas, I'm happy. And so we're good, all right, I'm just add a little into this rose here. And again, we're not going for super realism but we are thinking about kind of creating these. Oh, I got some of my sneaky black. I'm gonna leave that. I'm not even gonna try to fix it because it'll just turn into mud. So we'll just say it's a feature, not a bug. Yes, I work in IT. <laughs> All right, so this one here is getting a little bit lost in the sauce. Um, I'm gonna take just what's left of the white on my brush and kind of come in here to the red and ready orange, maybe. Here, I'll grab a little magenta to help myself out. But I need it to be a little bit lighter and I'm just gonna try and kind of add a little, a little lightness there. Just need it to pop a little bit, not too much. But if I can even get just a lightness so it doesn't feel completely sunk into the background, that's good. So this is a really busy piece, and that gold just looks like yellow, at least on camera. In real life, the gold looks pretty cool. Let's see if you can kind of see it. I feel like this vase would also look really good with some gold. I think I have a touch more, so maybe I'll take some of this color here that I had put in and see what I can see what I can slap down. Oh, all I have left is a strip, so we'll slap some down. Oops, some came off on my finger, no problem. I mean, I have more sheets. I can always get more. Look at that. Ooh, 
Yes, I like that one. That's, that's fun. Throw that away. Goodbye. So what I'm feeling now is we need some blues and some deep. This is a bit much. But again, you know, it's like we're half thinking our way through this and half just reacting and, and rolling. So I'm going to rinse my brush, get rid of the white and sort of the other phantom colors. I'm going to come back in over some of this and just add a bit more of the magenta to kind of depth tune. I like a little bit of that color peeking out. And I know I think I just kind of said I wanted more teal or I said it in my head. Maybe I didn't say it out loud. I did say it out loud, but then I found that whatever I had here was overwhelming and I don't, so there, there we go. So it's still peeking through, but I've kind of neutralized it and brought it back down by adding the magenta to it. All right, more mermaid tail. This is like a very dead, dead bottle here. In fact, it cracks me up this one. Like I had, I've, I've had some really cool like heirloom pumpkins that last forever, but a friend of mine took it and put it on a shelf where I wasn't expecting it. So I didn't see that it was rotting until I smelled it. It took me a few days to figure out what the smell was. I know, TMI. <laughs> but I also had a bunch of paint near it. And so like the rotten pumpkin, okay. You didn't really wanna know that, sorry. So a little teal in here, yeah. So teal is a beautiful color to kind of have in the shadows. So I'm thinking you know, even just a few of those kind of in with some of the greens and the leaves. I'm just keeping it loose. A little something here, give it some green structure. I want a little bit in the centers of these guys too. So because this guy is facing that way, I'm adding it just to this edge here. something in here I don't know Ooh, ooh, ooh those colors that actually did a lot of that had a lot of pow pow power that had a lot of pop and power for us right there I'm really happy with that so that's my mermaid tail it's kind of one of the most magical colors I've ever worked with and I'm gonna kind of get some mermaid tail in here with my greens and yellows just to kind of cool it so we have a couple of ranges of green colors I don't know what's happening in here but that's okay just kind of filling it in. A little something. Let's grab some yellow for a highlight. We'll do like a shot out of here with just our teal. That's working. Now what I see here is I almost want some shadow. So I'm gonna come back in here with a, that kind of darker tone that I had, although it's somewhat lightened, so. <sighs> Pausing to evaluate. You guys actually have a better view of this than I do. So we got a lot of light here, some dark here. I think the centers of the flowers want a little kapow on them. I'm also feeling like this guy here wants to be more intense. So I'm gonna bring back some of the yellow. So rinsing my brush. Okay, I've still got a little, oh, I'm just about out of that yellow, but we'll see what we can bring back in. No, we'll just get some more. So that's a primary yellow. Maybe a touch of orange to it, just a touch. Just a touch. Like a little bit more school bussy. Oh, yes. So I'm just kind of little sloofs from the tips of the, of the petals. I like, I like that warmth. I was missing the warmth. 
add some of that in here too. So I don't know what color that vase is. You're going to have to tell me. It's sort of a something vase. <laughs> oh, right. And then I'm going to go in here with this color and add maybe a few dots of something. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Not too much. I have to be careful because this one, it could get really busy really fast. But those centers, I think that's kind of happy. And so we could leave it like this. We could add some outline if we wanted to sort of bring some of the definition back. I I'm on the fence. But again, this is kind of how, how a design evolves, right? You kind of pause, you look at it, you think, you wonder, and then you take action as necessary. So it's a little bit muddy in through here. I'm wondering if I can bring bring back some of the red that I lost in that rose. Just a little. Yeah, just a few little blops. So I like the pink bits, but it was almost too much. Not 100% sold, but again, you know, sometimes you can overwork something a lot and then you just got to come back to it. And that's sometimes that's just what happens. Make a stress about it, or you can just accept and like, yeah, it's cool. Now, if I was trying to teach a lesson here and make sure that everybody mastered it, I would make sure, I would double, triple, quadruple, make sure that I kind of had dialed in the process before teaching it, but you're just kind of over shoulder with me as I as I play. Well, that's really fun. I like that little bit of red in there. What happens if I put a little red in here? Is that gonna pop this guy a little? Just little dabs. Oh yes, oh yes, see, there we go. Okay, so what I'm seeing that happened here is I had very warm, very cool, and they weren't talking to each other, but so if I bring in some of that red into the center, it adds more kind of depth and dimension and at least in my in my vision makes it feel more cohesive because now we've kind of got a red theme going on and I just slapped a little bit of my leftover red into the vase as well. Turns out I wasn't that big a fan of the kind of weird orangey tone. But now we've got colors that work together. Red dots, my friends. For this particular design, it was the red dots. I feel like we're at a fairly good stopping point, although, although, we, here's another thing, let's see, where's my thing, okay, I need a sharpener, I still have these, whatever they're called, Caranda, Caranda Shea, or Ash, it's, it's watercolor pencil, they're nice, but if I wanted to add just a little bit more to it, I could come in and kind of add some some shaping if I liked. Doesn't always show. Oh wow, I have all kinds of like fur and things in there. But if you want kind of a a sketchy sketchy look, you can kind of come over it. Let me see if I have one of my black ones too. Oh, these are the very best. The Stabilo Aquarelle paper glass, blah blah blah. This is the all pencil is what we call it, but I can kind of come in and Add a little something here, a little outline -y. That's fun. You could do a little something on this guy. And again, the idea is that this smudges and it gets messy, but it also does really well in wet paint. So if you're gonna varnish this sucker, you probably wanna spray paint it gently as opposed to, oh God, I love this. Yes, please. See, look at that. So we really are going kind of mixed media-ish. Scribbles, okay, can. 
Again, if you're like, oh, I don't like how that looks, you don't have to do it. But it makes me so happy. But look at how complex that flower now looks. And interesting because we've got, you know, layers upon layers of things happening. So how do I pull this guy into sort of an interest zone? I think I can just kind of sketchy scoo. And again, if you don't love it, you don't have to do it. But I think that's kind of fun the way it pops it. So I add some kind of ruffles to my flowers here. I need to buy these by the case to work these into one of my paint parties one of these days. They're just so fun. But it's also pretty hard for folks to just let go and do their thing, you know? You gotta keep them pencil sharpeners on hand. So I'm gonna add a little bit of scribble scrabble to the shaded portion of this. Here, we'll add a little something there, a little something here to kind of help define those leaves. <laughs> oh, you guys, thanks for, thanks for bearing with me as I get weird. Maybe I should take this to my dad. So here I can help kind of redefine where my brush strokes maybe got a little bit funky. But that sort of pulls that flower. Now that got a little bit dark. I'm okay with that. And I'm kicking up a few edges sort of where I have got a lot of paint or where I've maybe even got some of my other things in between. But here now I can add almost like scribbly, scrabbly, leafy-like shapes in here that kind of help Add some definition, Just outline a little on our purples. I'm gonna put in that black in there, just like give it a little something. I feel like I lost some of my red, I'm gonna come back. Now for this one, because I have the red there and I have the black, I'm gonna have to just place the red and be careful not to Careful not to brush because it's it'll just smudge and you'll get a black blech. You'll get mud. Nobody wants mud today. We don't need clear crisp either, but we don't want mud. All right, so now we got some leaves. Just finding all my purple bits and trying to give them a little form. Now, I think we want to come in and be like, okay, where do we need one or two key highlights? We're doing this whole thing with a 10 millimeter or 3 8 inch filbert. All right, there's a little bit of white right there. Let's see, we can add a little white in here. I need more white on my palette. Me trying to sneak around and find a white spot, find enough white is gonna make me crazy. So a little bit of white just kind of right in here. So we're considering contrast, values, right? The darks and the lights. So a little bit of extra white pop in a few spots here on the edges of the petals. Again, I'm working really hard to avoid the black scratchy scratches best effort. Maybe a little something on the leaves, a little few of these here. Where else? Sure. One or two white dots in the middle. Yep. Not too much, just a little. Keep it simple. These guys might want some dots. You can, of course, change out to different size brush if you like. I'm kind of working in the loose zone here, so I'm trying to keep it devil may care-ish. I don't know. So some of those lights that I added, I like. Some of them maybe dilute things a little bit. But overall, 
I think we're going to head it in the right direction here. These big strokes are fun. All right, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it good. I'm sure there's more that we could do. And since this is a personal piece, I'm just going to take this sucker, sharpen it. Well, that didn't work, did it? Let's try it again. I'm just going to gently sign right in here. 317. Oh, hey, happy St. Patrick's Day. Hi. So the, you can barely see my signature. I'm okay with that. But I thought that was kind of fun. So, hey, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you kind of feel like you've been given a little bit of permission to get out there and get weird and play and not worry too much about the results and just create create something pretty that makes you happy. Or better yet, experiment. Notice I didn't use a fresh, clean, gorgeous canvas. I find those to be very intimidating when I'm when I'm experimenting and playing. So, get a messed up canvas color it get your journal entries on it make it happen all right lecture over i'm playing down some of my whites they were a little bit too much too much And we're done. Okay, yeah, I'm like ending it, and then I'm twiddling and twiddling, and then I'm ending it, and then I'm fixing some more. And yeah, welcome to my world. All right, I love you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for joining me in my anti-stress meditative journaling and painting some flowers. See you on the next one. Bye.